Hey gang, Scott here. In this video, we'll take a look at the depth lighting filter in the effects module of On One Photo Raw 2026. This is one of the new filters they added, and it's a convenient filter if you are having certain editing situations, which I'll cover here in just a moment. Uh, but real quick, if you are thinking about adding Photo Raw 2026 to your toolkit or any of the other On One tools, check the show notes. There's an offer code down there for you. Save you a little money, give me a little support, helps me do more videos like this. So depth lighting. Uh, what does this filter do? Uh, I, I alluded to it. It gives you the ability to adjust brightness, darkness, or temperature for the foreground and the background, but with quite a bit of control, all packed into one filter. If you're having a, uh, a scene where that's the type of adjustment you need to do, I need to adjust exposure effectively for the foreground versus background, and I want to also adjust temperature this depth lighting filter makes that approachable and you don't have to be reaching into your masking tools to go do it. Let me show you how it works on a couple of photos here. If you are a portrait photographer, you're going to find this filter pretty darn useful. Uh, we'll find it up here in the add filter area under the essentials, you'll find depth lighting and you get a set of controls, the normal things. We have opacity to control strength. There's a few styles built in. Let's run down the different sliders and then we'll see them in action. So foreground, background, you've got a pair of sliders here and you can kind of tell this is gonna make things darker, this is gonna make things brighter. So as I push this around, we'll see parts of the photo get brighter or darker. And let's just, for illustrative purposes, do the same thing with maybe the opposite for the background. So you can see I'm adjusting foreground and background independently. Depth is what's going to bias your, uh, your, your, they call it a depth translation. It's really, well, what do I want to consider the foreground or the background? Now, when you're working with this, you can see the, the photo change as I slide this around. It's like, well, in this case, I'm brightening the background. So I'm saying, oh, consider more things background, consider more things foreground. I'm going to come back to the slider in a moment. Just push it over here for a minute. And then transition is really the, the feather between the two. What's the, the transition from foreground to background? Uh, very, uh, very firm, very crisp, or soft and tapered off. And this is really something you just work visually. You can see as I'm pushing this around, you see kind of this, this in this case, because I have this very contrasty change here, there's kind of a glow that comes back and forth around the subject, right? So that's what transition's doing. And finally, for temperature, just like you had brightness, you have temperature controls, foreground, what is foreground or what is not a foreground, and then background. So that's like the, the, the rundown of the sliders. But you know, let's put this into a, in practical terms. And I, I wanna start with the depth slider first, because when I'm working with this tool, that's the first slider I'm reaching for. I want to decide, well, what is my depth? You know, what thing do I want to uh, affect differently? How do I want to separate foreground from background? And the trick is to use on a, on a Windows machine, use the Alt key or on Mac, use the Option key. Hold that down while you move this depth slider and it visualizes everything for you. So I've reset the filter and I'm reaching for the depth slider first. Now I'm pressing and holding the option key. I'm on a Mac. And now as I slide this, you get this, uh, this interesting, you know, grayscale image. This is telling me what's going to be impacted. You know, white is going to be affected. Black will be protected. And so if I want to more isolate my subject, you can see the depth, very shallow. What's closest to the camera, his elbow. And then as I, filter this out to about here, that feels pretty good. I have a little bit of impact on, on the background, but most of it is on my subject. I'm still holding the option key, transition. I can also see that feather, you know, very easy to visualize it when you use the transit or when you use the option key for depth and transition sliders. I'll leave that right about there. Now that I know that, my, my hands are off the controls again. It's like, well, what do I want to do? Well, I'd like the subject to be a little brighter. I want the background to be a little darker. So my foreground, which is, you know, which is Danny here, I'll push, I'll push that up. I'll push it very far. You can see it brightening up, but only the areas that I have, uh, you know, kind of pre-selected by using the depth slider and the background I can make darker and to, you know, to go all the way down the end here, we'll, will make the subject a little warmer and I'll really make the background very cool. You know, so that was one filter before and after all of those types of changes. The key thing to drive home, really work with this depth slider first, use the alter option key so you can visualize it. 
So that's for a portrait image, which is the classic example for depth lighting when there's a very clear subject and uh, you know, everything that's not the subject is kind of the background. Uh, what about uh, a more complicated scene like a landscape? Uh, the same principles apply. And so uh, you know, here's a landscape. We'll walk through depth lighting on it. Quickly go ahead and add depth lighting. And the first thing I'm reaching for is the depth slider. I'm holding down my option key. And now when I click and slide, you know, there is my my foreground things that are closest to my camera these you know the canopy of trees above the top and then we get to the water and then finally you know work our way all the way out to the back and so in this case i might do something right around here which is almost dead center and in this case i want to darken the foreground you know kind of push your eye out toward the back and maybe even brighten the background now if um I don't want uh, any temperature controls. I can leave that alone. I can play with this. Maybe uh, warm the background a little bit. Maybe this time cool the foreground. Again, you know, pushing pushing a little uh, more subtly there. But um, for the sake of argument, I haven't had to do anything with masking. But let's say you know, looking at that depth again, you know, I was impacting you know the 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 white bridge and the structure there. I don't want that to be uh, you know be be impacted. I still have all my masking tools, just like I do with any filter. And so I can say here, let me do mask AI and subtract, and I'll just subtract the architecture, right? Pick that, take care of that. And that will be removed from the depth lighting. There we go. And so now when I look at that depth again, you're going to see, well, there's the, the part that I'm not even impacting at all with depth. So you have those, those options there. If this is uh, getting you most of what you need, you always have the option to get in there and do a little, uh, little masking. But as I said at the top, you know, one of the things that's nice about depth lighting is you don't have to reach for those masking tools if all you want to do is brightening or temperature adjustments, brighten, darken, temperature adjustments for foreground or background. And you know, that might beg the question, if you've watched uh, my other videos about depth masks, not depth lighting, depth masks in On One, then you're like, well, wh wh why do I want uh, this filter over depth masks? And it really comes down to what you want to do. What type of adjustment do you want to do? Because depth masks are very cool. Again, different video about them. Go check it out. And you can use them with any filter or any layer for that matter, where depth lighting is a much more targeted, specific tool. And it works great when, like I've said many times already, <laughs> brightness, darkness, or temperature. Nine times out of 10, you're not going to need any masking. Just work with that depth slider. You want something more complicated or you want to do something with a glow or with a dynamic contrast, any of the other filters that we have in effects, and you want that to only impact foreground or background or something in between, check out depth masks different video on that. Hope you found this about uh, depth lighting helpful, useful questions, drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.